Welcome to the Freeport Connection with Tommy. This is your Hello Sale Results uh, pay-per-view. Uh, along with NXT spoilers for this month. Well, WWE NXT Diva Alexa Bliss was busted open during a match against Sasha Banks at uh, this uh, past week's uh, TV tapings from Full Sail University. Bliss was said to be bleeding pretty bad with blood all over her face and the match will air on November 13th. She wrote on Twitter... Uh, she was okay and one tough cookie. Seth Rollins recently spoke with Digital Spy to promote the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view and there are some highlights. You and Dean Ambrose are co-main eventing with John Cena and Randy Orton. Do you care who is going to be on last or is it that important? Yeah, it is. I'd be lying to you if I didn't say that it was. We don't know the answer to that question until Sunday comes. Of course it's important. Uh, I want to go on last every single night, regardless of the match, regardless of the show. But you throw in the added element uh, that we're going up against Cena Orton match, which has been headlining pay-per-views for the last decade. That's something huge. It's uh, a big thing going to be able to go on after that match and exceed all the expectations. That's important. I want that challenge. I want that responsibility. And I want to go on last. And I want to be known as a guy who goes on last every single night. That's important to me. You and Randy Orton have a bit of a dissent lately. How healthy or unhealthy is your, your rivalry now? I would go out on a limb to say it's uh, fairly healthy. People don't need to get, uh, get things mixed up about what happened on Monday between me and Randy. Randy is a snake in the grass. If I hadn't uh, done to him what I did, curb stopping him, he might have RKO'd me at, at any time. I just wanted to send a little message to Randy Orton and let him know that I'm on my toes. And that I'm not uh, messing around. Hopefully he heard that message loud and clear. I haven't seen him or, or talked to him since then, but he's got some bigger stuff to worry about come Sunday in Hell Cell. And then maybe after that we can try to figure out how he feels about me. I know he's not too found of my current situation with the authority, but he's got to have to get to, to used to it. He doesn't want to share the spotlight. I get it. But he's going to have to if he wants to make this thing work and be successful all along the way. Another Paul, Paul Heyman guy was CM Punk. Will he ever come back? Could he be uh, coming back before WrestleMania 31? Before WrestleMania 31, highly, highly unlikely. Down the road, part of me was 100% sure that he'd be back at some point. But the longer he's away, the more it makes me wonder that maybe he's gone. He spent a good portion of his life dedicated to this business. It's good for him that may, uh, maybe get away. He's done all there really is to do. So I hope he's happy and I hope that he's doing well for himself and enjoying his life away from wrestling, you know. That's uh, what all we all work for, and to be able to retire early and enjoy our lives. So I hope that this is the case for him. And he's talking about none other than CM Punk. <clears throat> and now for your NXT spoilers. From Water Park, Florida, Full Sail University. Sent in by Jacob. Uh, Dark match. Dana Brooke defeated Devin Taylor. Yes, Devin Taylor, the interview girl. November 13th show. The show opened with film uh, with uh, Finn Baylor cutting a promo. He said he's in NXT because he's the future. Tyson Kidd interrupted him and said nobody cared. Jesse Grable came out and agreed with Kidd. Gabriel and Kidd cornered Baylor before Kitty Otami ran out to make the save. Thus the new tag team. This became an impromptu tag match as Finn Baylor and Hideo Otami defeated Tyson Kidd and Justin Gabriel as Baylor pinned Gabriel after a diving double stomp. Sasha Banks over, uh, went over Alexa Bliss after the match. Sasha called out Charlotte and told her to hand over the NXT Women's Championship. Match number three, Lucha Dragons defeated Wesley Blake and Buddy Murphy. Match number four, Adrian Neville pinned Sami Zayn to retain the NXT title. Neville feigned a leg injury and rolled up Zayn for, for the win. And that was the end of that show. November 20th taping. Had Becky Lynch pinning Bailey with a handful of trunks. After the match, Charlotte ran out to save Bailey from getting attacked. 
The Vaughn Villas came out and cut a promo about being the number one contenders in the tag titles. They said they wanted their match with the Lucha Dragons. Now, out came a mini Lucha Dragon team. The Vaughn Villas defeated the mini Lucha team. And match number three, Baron Cor Corbin squashed the jobber, according to the counting crowd. This match was 22 seconds. As Corbin left, he crossed paths with Bull Dempsey and the two exchanged glances. Match number four, Bull Dempsey squashed another jobber. Didn't get the names. Tyson Kidd defeated, defeated CJ Parker after the match Kidd challenged Finn Balor to a match for the following episode. And that was your main event for that show. And your November 27th show taping. Match of more, Enzo Amore and Colin Cassidy defeated the Mechanics. After the match, the Ascension laid out Enzo and Cass. They cut a promo saying things between them and Tommy and Baylor were far from over. Sami Zayn then came out for a promo. He showed footage of Neville faking the leg injury before Neville came out, still selling his leg. Zayn said if he can't win a, win a rematch, he'll leave NXT. Neville said Zayn can have the match once he's healed up. William Regal came out and formally announced that Sami Zayn versus Adrian Neville for the NXT Championship as your main event of the next live special on December the 11th. Neville said he wouldn't let Zayn put his career on the line, but Zayn said it doesn't matter. If he can't win, he's done. Match number two, title Breeze pinned Marcus Lewis. Breeze uh, berated Lewis be, uh, for being ugly, hit his finisher, and pinned him. Lewis had an emotional breakdown that lasted forever before leaving. And the Divas match saw Carmella defeating Leva Bates, aka Old Blue Pants. Uh, <coughs> match number four, Lucha Dragons defeated Jason Jordan and Ty Dillinger. Bailey cut a promo about not tolerating bullies before she got beat down and bullied by Sasha Bates and Becky Lynch. And your main event. Match number five, Finn Baylor defeated Tyson Kidd by disqualification as the Ascension interfered, leading to the disqualification and resulting in a brawl between the Ascension and Baylor and Otami. And December 4th, taping, Charlotte defeated Mia Kim. After the match, Sasha Bates came out and it was made official that she would challenge Charlotte for the Women's Championship at the next takeover. Baylor came out uh, with the aid of a crutch and told Sasha to shut up. Sasha kicked her crutch out. Charlotte tried to make the save, but Becky Lynch ran out and attacked Charlotte. The segment ended with Sasha celebrating with the women's championship. <coughs> Match number two, the Vault Villains defeated Wesley Blake and Buddy Murphy. Match number three, Bull Dizzy squashed the jobber. After the match, there was another stare down between Bull and Baron Corbin. Match number four, Baron Corbin squashed, squashed the jobber. Match number five, Finn Baylor and Hideo Tommy defeated Tyson Kidd and Tyler Breeze. Well, that's a tag team. Adrian Neville came out for a go-home promo, heading into the takeover three. As Neville said he, he'd win at any cost, Sami Zayn wasn't happy about Neville's new attitude. Neville said he expects this to be a match of, of their career. And Zayn said it isn't about respect. It isn't about being the good guy before he slapped Neville. Zayn said Neville doesn't get to end him, he said he'll end Adrian Neville's NXT Championship reign. And your main event dark match. After the tapings, Seth Rollins came out and cut a promo. That was it. The crowd was said to be disappointed that he wasn't advertised, but didn't actually work a match. Well, that was the end of the NXT tapings. And your pay-per-view, pay-per-view, hell of sell results. Gene Ambrose uh, versus Seth Rollins in a Hell in a Cell match, for those who didn't know. John Cena versus Randy Orton, for those who didn't know. That's why you're watching my show. And your Hell in a Cell, thanks to the network and uh, on pay-per-view from Dallas, Texas at the American Airlines Center. Well, fans were entering, uh, were shown entering the building for the pre-show. As Renee Young introduced the show, Hell in a Cell structure was shown hanging above the ring. The panel featured Young, Booker T, Alex Riley, and guest Paul Heyman. Young gave the network the price pitch, only 
I don't charge $9.99, so you can watch my videos free. Heyman didn't play alone. He said you know, he, he was there on behalf of Brock Lesnar and had an agenda. And Heyman said that it, either John Cena or Randy Orton are next in line to be fed to my carnivore. Video package to recap Seth Rollins turning on Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns and set up the Rollins versus Ambrose match. Raleigh broke down the keys to victory for Rollins and then Ambrose. Heyman explained why he felt Rollins had the advantage over Ambrose and Riley predicted an Ambrose win. Tom Phillips checked in on, from the social media lounge and read a bunch of uh, fan tweets and Pimp the Network. A video package focused on John Cena and Randy Orton feud and compared it to Ali vs. Fraser. This is where I caught the feed in into the pay-per-view and just before the only match on the pre-show the feed cuts out. Yeah, on the network feed. Also on the feed that I got from an unknown site. I won't give it up. This is not where I can get more views for those that don't watch pay-per-views. And the winner's nightmare because the winner steps out of hell and it goes seven rungs down the ladder to face Lesnar, according to. Uh, they also compared the uh, Orton Cena fight with uh, Bird versus Magic and Brady versus Manny. Riley said Cena wants to break Ric Flair's record for most world title reigns. And Heyman said that the match will be winner's nightmare. Heyman is a million times better at the pregame show Stitch and the panel regulars. He's never tongue in cheek and he doesn't engage in the silly laugh-a-thon approach that every pregame show, WWE and otherwise employees, and comments make the matches more compelling even while he stays true to his character. Michael Cole saw JBL and Jerry Lawler check in on commentary as a miss, and Miss Dow make the way for Miss Dow TV. I did catch this part. Once in the ring, Miz took credit for bestowing the honor of giving his stunt double his own show, Miz Dow said. This is the greatest moment in the history of his career, then introduced the Miz as his first guest. Miz coached Sandow on the question to ask him, then looked perturbed when Miz Dow took credit for beating Seamus on Raw. Miz Dow corrected himself and said that he works for Miz, who actually beat Seamus. Miz Dow told Miz that he's the best friend he's ever had. And Miz said that he's touched and generous enough to give them back. Damien, you're a damn good stunt double. One that I'm truly proud to call my friend. Miz said. And then Miz and Miz Dow hugged. Seamus popped up on the big screen and said that Miz Dow should get down on his hands and knees and kiss his ass goodbye. Seamus said, uh, set up his tra uh, trailer and said he was giving away the best part before broke kicking the camera. Uh, get a kick out of Miz and Miz Dow. The comedy worked for me. Uh, they tied it together and by the end having Seamus interrupt to set up his match with the Miz. The panel then discussed the tag title match. Seamus said the Usos have momentum and the champions have their backs against the wall. Shockingly, Riley and Booker went against Heyman by predicting the tag team champions retaining. The focus shifted to the Nikki Bella versus Brie Bella match. Booker did on his Chucky Ducky quack, quack routine. Heyman asked what the hell was that well, that that meant. Booker laughed for no reason, which is par for the course with his Jamie Dukes, Michael Irvin routine. A video recap the uh, Bella vs. Bella match. And don't forget the stipulation. The loser has to do the 30-day stitch of being the other one's bitch. Carry the bags and we'll have your bitch. After Booker made some bizarre comments, uh, that seemed to imply that the twins had some same thoughts at all times. They shifted uh, to the focus of Rusev vs. Big Show and aired a video package. Leo Lee and Garcia uh, introduced a kickoff show match. Mark Henry vs. Bo Dallas. Bo cut a promo on his way to the ring. Well, I didn't even get that uh, bizarre comment because uh, the, the feed went out. During the uh, right uh, after the Damien Sandow uh, Mid TV stitch, <coughs> stick I should say, Bo cut a promo on, on his way to the ring. Bo said he's the new world strongest man because he beat Mark Henry four times. Bo said he's embarrassed that the city shares his last name, so he is changing his name for one night only to Bo Washington. 
Cole saw explain the joke for the non-NFL fans. Henry attacked Dallas. When the bell sounded, it finished him off quickly with the world's strongest slam. Took 35 seconds. Afterwards, Bo said, he wasn't ready. You cheated and uh, cheaters never win, Bo said. Bo claimed that he's a winner in the, in the record book of life because Bo leaves. Henry went to the ringside and threw Bo into the barricade. And Young hyped the Divas Championship match. Then Byron Saxon interviewed Paige and Alicia Fox on the backstage set. Paige said Lee ripped her heart out. But Alicia was there to pick up the pieces. Paige kissed Fox off the cheek. Or uh, uh, Fox on the cheek. And then said she will rip out Lee's heart and steal her best friend. The Divas Championship. And the panel delivered more hype and then set up the numbers video. And that was in the in the pre-show. Hello, Cell starts off. And uh, the opening theme to open the show. Cole saw lifted to the attendance at 15,103. And you'll find out on the Monday night raw video of how many was actually there. Match number one, Dolph Ziggler versus Cesaro in the best of three falls match for the Incontinental Championship. As Ziggler was cheered and Cesaro drew some booze from uh, from the entrance. Cesaro had a clean shaven hit. Cue ball, uh, yet kept the beard. Both men uh, traded uh, near falls within the first few minutes. Three minutes in, Cesaro set up for a Cesaro swing, but Ziggler caught him on an inside cradle. Cesaro came back moments later and performed a Cesaro swing again, which received a favorable reaction from the live crowd. Ziggler kicked out of the cover and rolled him into one of his own, taking the first fall at three minutes, 35 seconds. Cesaro then showed off his power, showed off his power with an impressive power bomb. Ziggler came back and caught Cesaro in a submission hold, which Cesaro eventually broke by slamming Ziggler into the corner. Ziggler held onto Cesaro's arm, and Cesaro climbed to the second rope and then performed a great superplex. The fans responded with this is awesome chant. Ziggler dodged a charging Cesaro in the corner and then put him down with a famous error. But Cesaro kicked out a two good near fall. Ziggler went for the zigzag. Cesaro avoided it through Ziggler. Into the air, caught him with an uppercut on the way down for another good near fall. Cesaro then performed a backbreaker for a two count, went for a finisher, but Ziggler dodged it, countered it, and hit a series of moves that concluded with a zigzag for the second fall and retained the championship at 12 minutes 25 seconds. A very good match to start the show. Ziggler winning both falls was surprising. I hope it so somehow leads to something for Cesaro. Well, I hope it leads to. More than a bunch of TV non-title losses for Ziggler. Either way, a strong show opening match. Broadcast team told the viewers who were watching on pay-per-view that, that what they are missing out. They pimped the network again for $9.99. Backstage, Triple H told Randy Orton to finish John Cena and take back the World Heavyweight Championship. Orton told Hunter, Stephanie, and Kane that if they don't deal with Seth Rollins, then he will. Match number two, Brie Bella versus Nikki Bella. The loser becomes the other sister's servant for a month. In other words, being a bitch. Uh, Brie did the yes routine during her entrance. Cole saw noted that Daniel Bryan encouraged his online followers to cheer on his wife. Eden Styles served as the ring announcer for the match. The announcers questioned whether that they have ever had sister versus sister in WWE. Shouldn't one of them have figured that out by, by now doing some, some prep work? Nikki took off offensive control of the match and got, got a two count. She told her sister to just give up. Brie came back and hit, hit a running knee as her sister was seated in front of, of the ropes. Nikki rolled to ringside to avoid taking the move again. Brie performed a suicide dive on the Nikki who came up holding her, her shit. Also record, recalled Nikki's previous shin injury and said it nearly ended her career. Bray went up top and performed a missile drop kick for a due count of 4 minutes 35 seconds. Nikki came back and performed her rack attack to finish her, but Bree kicked out. Bree went for the yes lock, but Nikki reached the ropes before she could lock it in, and Nikki stood up and knocked Bree down with a big punch, then hit the rack attack again for the win. And the match took 6 minutes 25 seconds. So, Bree's got to be Nikki's bitch for 30 days. It's hard to find fault with both women were working the, to the best of their abilities. It was, I was surprised to see the clean finish was the idea that well, Nikki cheated by throwing a punch. If so, the broadcast team didn't sell it. I can't blame them since we see punches go un, 
unpunished all the time. Meanwhile, Lawler stated immediately after the match that Bree, being her, her sister's servant, isn't going to be entertaining. At least Coleslaw tried to sound a bit somber about the baby face being forced to work for her sister. A WWE video game commercial aired for the pre-show panel checking in as Booker got in his latest shucky ducky line again for the pay-per-view. And they reminded us about the WWE 2K15 coming out Tuesday. Well, actually Monday at midnight. Match number three, Goldust of Stardust versus Uso Brothers for the WWE Tag Team Championship. Stardust had added some blue to his uh, ring gear. The Uso Brothers got the better of Stardust and worked him over early on. The Uso Brothers got the better of the Stardust and worked him over early on. The champs ended up working over Jimmy Uso until he disposed of Goldust over the top rope. J-Tag then performed separate running dives over the top rope onto Goldust and then Stardust. Jay performed a high cross body block on Goldust for two count at 6 minutes 30 seconds in. Goldust came back with a spine buster and, and an animated cover for two count at 8 minutes in. Goldust threw chops in the corner. That drew obligatory woo responses from the crowd. One of the Uso super kicked Goldust for a two count. The Uso's followed up with a stereo super flexes. A short time later, uh, Stardust kicked back. Uh, the back of uh, Jay's leg when he had Goldust up for a move. Goldust took advantage and hit his finisher for the win. And the champions retained at 10 minutes 20 seconds. Good work from all four men, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I'd seen it all before. Being sad. But even the, uh, the big spots from the Uso brothers are starting to feel a bit re repetitive. These teams have worked together a lot, but I feel some of the problem with the Uso spots Feeling repetitive is that, that they are asked to work so many long six-man tag matches on Raw, which has led to overexposure. A Susan G. Coleman video aired. Byron Saxon interviewed breast cancer survivor Nikki Hammonds, Blakely, and the president and CEO of the Coleman Group at Ringside Hell of Cell Music Play. Then a video package for the Cena vs. Orton match aired, which was match number four. John Cena vs. Randy Orton in the Hell of Cell match for a shot at the WWE Heavyweight Championship against Brock Lesnar. He should have been stripped about 30 days ago since he hasn't competed in 30 days. Colesaw noted that this wasn't uh, this was Orton's sixth Hell of Cell match and the 29th overall Hell of Cell match. JBL ruined the good prep work moment by saying that if there was anyone made to be a sports entertainer, it's Randy Orton. Yuck, once Cena made his entrance, uh, JBL said Orton and Cena have, a, have held a combined 27 world titles. Orton brought a chair into play and both men made early attempts to use it. Orton uh, ended up, well what I seen was Cena bringing the chairs in. Orton may have used it first, but uh, Orton uh, ended up uh, jabbing Cena in the gut with a chair. Then slammed it over his back and uh, got a throwaway two count. Cena came back with an attitude adjustment. But Orton dodged it and DDT Cena for a two count. Orton took Cena to ringside and ground, ground his face into the cage. Then brought him back inside the ring and covered him for another two count. Four minutes with the seconds in. And then there were dually chance for Cena. Of course, the Cena sucks. Let's go Cena. Orton stu uh, struck his pose. You know the... Pose. And then Cena closed on him. Orton quickly regained offensive control. Three to repeat with Orton running Cena into the cage, then getting a two count back inside the ring. Cena started to make a comeback, but Orton cut him off with a power slam for a two count. Orton went for a hanging DDT, draping DDT, and then Cena avoided it and backdropped Orton to ringside. Nine minutes, 25 seconds in. Cena then picked up Orton and rammed him back first into the cage. Orton fought out. And crotch Cena on the ring post at 10 minutes in. There was a loud RKO chant from the adult male fans. As Cena and Orton followed at ringside, uh, Cena whipped Orton into the cage a few times. Cena reached under the ring, pulled out a table. More toys, JBL said. It's Christmas time in Dallas. <laughs> <Vomit. laughs> uh, Cena set up a table in the, in the ring and went for his finisher, but Orton slipped away and ran Cena into a chair. 
that he waved his in the corner earlier. Orton got another, uh, another got a, gets another two count as Cole saw. So the story of Orton dominating the match. Orton set up a table in the corner of the ring. Orton tried to whip Cena into the table, but he slid short of it. Cena performed a shoulder block and went for another, but Orton caught him with an RKO for a great near fall of 15 minutes in. Orton ran uh, Cena through the uh, through the table that was leaning in the corner of the ring and got another two counts. Orton barked at the referee over the pace of the count. Orton brought the ring steps inside the ring that struck the Viper's pose. Orton went for the RKO, but Cena dodged it and uh, slammed Orton in, onto the ring steps. Cena went for the attitude adjustment. Orton slips out and, blow, and low blow Cena. Uh, Coleslaw quickly pointed out that the low blow is legal in a Hell is Hell match. Orton backed up and went for the putt kick, but Cena went all loosey to his Charlie Brown by moving out of the way. For those that don't, don't watch Peanuts cartoon, it's always where Lucy's holding the football for Charlie Brown, and when Charlie Brown goes to kick it, Lucy moves the football and does the back bump. Back bump. Cena applied the SUF, Orton reached the ropes. Colesaw reminded viewers that the referee didn't have to call for the break in a Hell of Cell match, because there are no rules. Orton rolled to ringside, Cena pick him up, picks up the ring steps and threw them on Orton, who dodged the stairs, which then hit the floor and then the, ca and the cage. Back inside the ring, Cena hits out of his adjustment for a two count. At two minutes, 20 seconds in. Yep, yep, somewhere. <laughs> that was wrong. Cena went for the move again, but Orton countered into the RKO. Yeah, this was he had him up on the shoulders just setting up for that two testament when he goes for it. RKO. For a great near two count fall. Great spot. And then came back Cena came back and placed Orton on the table again and went to the top rope where Orton cut him off. Orton went for the RKO as Cena blocked it and ended up hitting him. Attitude adjustment through the table and got the win. After the match, Cena walked to the ringside and stared at Paul Heyman, who was at the pre show panel desk. You can didn't actually tell him they were still sitting at the desk. There was a break through the crowd. They were just sitting right there. Uh, John uh, he won the match at 26 minutes, 25 seconds to earn a title shot. A good Brock Lesnar. Cena and Orton working for 26 minutes was a ballsy move. After all, we've seen the fans turn on the their matches in the past, the fans were electric by, weren't very electric at all by any means, but there were no boring chants or other catcall chants. I had very little interest in seeing them wrestle one another again, but they more than held my interest for at least this match, a strong back and forth match with some great near falls and innovative counter with a surprise ending to the match. Great work for both men and the match will be tough. For Ambrose and Rollins to top, by the way, I love the Ambrose vs. Rollins in the main event slot where it belongs. We know WWE loves to send the crowd home happy, which would seem to bode well for Ambrose. And due to the fact that I did not get to see the main event match, I have to go to the dirt sheets to read the what happened. A big show was uh, backstage. Big show was shadow boxing as Mark Henry shouted encouragement. Shows Eddie was going to knock out the bastard Rusev. Shows Eddie was going uh, would beat Rusev for his country himself and Henry. Match number five: Sheamus versus The Miz with Miz now for the U.S. Championship. Prior to the match, footage aired of Miz now from the pre-show. Sheamus went for his finisher to start the match, but Miz avoided it. It was all Sheamus early on. Miz now distracted Sheamus. Miz charged and Seamus dodged him, causing Miz to close on Miz now. Miz took control when he caught Seamus with a boot to the face and he was returning to the ring. Seamus caught Miz with a shoulder block off the second rope for a two count. Miz caught Seamus with a kick, but Seamus performed the Irish curse backbreaker for another two count. Miz continued to make kicks at the biggest part of his offense. As he went back on the offense, after a couple of them, and they performed a neck breaker for a two count that fans didn't get, uh, didn't get at all. Miz got cocky and slapped Sheamus a couple of times. Miz performed a DDT for a two count. 
Miss Dow mimicking everything the Miz did from the hard camera side, leading to a Miz Dow awesome chant. Seven minutes, ten seconds in, Seamus sets up for the finisher. Miz Dow climbed onto the apron and yelled, Cut! Don't do this! Miz rolled up Seamus, who rolled through and had Miz pinned. But Miz Dow distracted the referee. Miz hit the score of finale and went for a cover. Seamus kicked out. Miz hit the clothesline in the corner and then a series of punches. Miz went for the top and uh, jumped into a broke kick, which led to Seamus covering him for the win. Then the match took 8 minutes 30 seconds. It took the fans some time to come down from the previous match, but they seemed to develop some interest in the match. Down the stretch, Miz Dow was a riot. As he jumped off the ring steps, at the same time Miz jumped off the top rope for the finish. They did a bit uh, after the match where Seamus held up Miz's limp body and even did the YMCA while Miz Dow emulated the same thing. Backstage, uh, Brie was uh, already in servant mode for Nikki by, by loading her luggage into the back of her vehicle. Nikki poured her drink over Brie's head. That one's for you, Nikki said. She told Brie to go make her drink in the, uh, the same exact way as she did earlier. Because she told her right after the match to go get her a drink, supposedly. And a video package set up the Rusev versus Big Show match. As uh, Nikki drove away, leaving Brie there. Match number six, Rusev versus Lana versus Big Show. As Lana asked the fans to stand for the Russian anthem. But shows me the play to stay. Bruce have dodged a charging show in the corner. He also avoided a kick from show and wrenched his leg down over his shoulder. And when they went to work on the leg, fans chanted USA as show sold the leg. Show broke free in the, uh, of Rusev's hold on his leg with a kick. Rusev came right back with an impressive suplex and went right back to focusing on show's leg as the USA chant started up again. At 3 minutes 30 seconds in, Rusev caught Show with a drop kick and let out a primal scream that the fans responded to with booze. Rusev kicked Show. Show's back and set up for his finisher. But Big Show slid between Rusev's legs and then applied a leg lock. Wow, that was a big spread for Rusev. As uh, big as uh, Big Show was. Rusev cried out in agony and Atlanta yelled at the referee. What? just for uh, doing a split. Rusev reached the ropes, uh, the ropes uh, to break the hole. <coughs> Show regained offensive control and Mark Henry walked to ringside. Show grabbed Rusev for a choke slam, but Rusev kicked his leg to break free. Rusev went for another kick, but Show gra grabbed him by the throat and then choke slammed him. Show covered and Rusev kicked out at two. Show and Rusev went to ringside at six minutes, 40 seconds. And Henry shouted encouragement to Show as Show threw Rusev back inside the ring. Rusev caught Show with a kick as he returned to the ring and kicked Henry off the apron. Rusev caught Show with a super kick 7 minutes 25 seconds. As Rusev then applied the accolade at 7 minutes 35 seconds, the fans chanted USA. Referee called for the bell. Coleslaw said Show tapped to the accolade and Rusev remained unstoppable. I hadn't seen nothing from that myself. I think that was a box from the ref from the referee and everybody in that match. And the results from the dirt sheet say that Rusev defeated Big Show in eight minutes. This wasn't bad, but everything about their Raw match was better, including the much stronger call for Cole. <coughs> the live crowd was into the match and chanting USA, but Show apparently tapping out. I didn't see it. It was deflating. I thought that they would have show lose due to Henry or some other way that would allow him to save faith and set up the need for one more match. Another Susan G. Cohen video aired and aired for Survivor Series was shown as well. Dean Ambrose delivered a promo backstage. He mentioned that Halloween is on Friday and that Seth Rollins would look like a zombie that had sex with something dead and threw in a few more gross lines. Uh, AJ Lee versus Paige with Alicia Fox for the Divas title. Lee got the better of the opening exchange and caught Paige with a kick. Paige went to ringside. Lee followed and eventually jumped out onto Fox and hit her with a series of punches. Paige came back with, uh, by catching Lee and then uh, whipping her into the barricade a couple of times. Back inside the ring, Paige dove her knee into Lee's back while wrenching back on her arm. 
Lee came back with a kick, uh, kick the page out of the corner and they're performing a test press on her. Lee came back when it got a near fall. But the live crowd didn't respond to for even slant. Fox even slammed the, her hand onto the mat repeatedly and never got reaction out of the, out of the crowd at all. Paige ca carried Lee while she skipped for a bit and then performed a fall away slam. As AJ rolled to ringside, Paige followed. Paige set up the barricade, set up on the barricade, and then Lee swept her legs out from underneath her, causing Paige to crash on the mat. Lee took the match back inside the ring, applied to Black Widow, and got the win. After the match, Paige smacked Alicia Fox and then left Left the ring yelling, I hate you. AJ defeated Paige in 6 minutes 55 seconds. Another forgettable Divas Championship match that continued to pay for the confusing and lousy setup for the feud. What has Lee done to connect with the fans since she's returned? She skips and smiles. This feud should, should be, been so much better, but it isn't. Like their ring work is so good that it's making up for the poor booking. The Hell in Cell music played as the structure lowered around the ring for the main event video package set up from the main event. Late wishful thinking predictions. The White family emerged from underneath the ring and helped Seth Rollins win, which sets up Ambrose with fresh opponents and frees up Rollins for his program with Randy Orton. Well, that does come true. <coughs> like I said, I didn't see it. You see the match itself. Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins in a Hell in Cell match. Ambrose was the first entrant. Then brought out Kendo Six to, to the ring in an archery arrow holder. He immediately pulled chairs and a table out, out from underneath the ring. Ambrose looked up and then he decided to climb to the top of the cage. Wallace came out of uh, came out carrying his money break, bank briefcase. Wallace went to ring, ringside and asked if Ambrose wanted him up there. Jamie Noble and Joey Mercury tried to talk him out of, out of going up. Wallace told them. They don't tell him what to do, he tells them what to do. Rollins started to climb the cage, then stopped and told the new students to go up and get Ambrose. You do what I tell you to do, Ambrose said. You work for me. Mercury and Noble climbed up opposite sides of the structure. Ambrose hit both men with kendo stick shots. Wallace climbed up the other side of the structure and went after Ambrose. Rollins and Ambrose traded punches. The students held up Ambrose up a while. Rollins picked him picked up a kendo stick and used it repeatedly hitting Ambrose with it. <clears throat> the fans started booing. Rollins dropped the kendo stick off the side of the cage. The fans chanted for Ambrose. Rollins instructed the new students to throw Ambrose off the side of the cage. Ambrose fought them off and suplexed Noble on the top of the cage. The fans chanted, this is awesome, even though nothing had really happened. Rollins climbed down the side of the cage and Ambrose followed. Ambrose caught Rollins halfway down. After exchanging blows, both men crashed through a tube broadcast tables. The fans chanted, this is awesome again, and the referees and the trainers checking on both men. EMTs brought out stretchers to the ringside. They placed Rollins onto a stretcher first, and then placed Ambrose on the other. Rollins was being wheeled up the aisle when Ambrose got up and chased after him. Ambrose attacked Rollins and eventually threw him inside the Hell of Cell structure, then slammed the cage door on his head, which had to happen in Dallas. Ambrose entered the Hell of Hell Cell structure and then the bell rang to restart to start the match. Eight minutes after they started fighting on top of the cage, Ambrose picked up a chair and yelled, You stabbed me in the back, you son of a bitch. Uh, Ambrose hit Rollins with repeated chair shots and the crowd cheered. A short time later, uh, later uh, Rollins standing on, on the ring apron now as Ambrose got a running start and dropped, kicked him off the apron and into the cage, which is a cool spot. Ambrose then performed suicide dive that drove Rollins into the cage. The fans chanted for Ambrose, who then placed a few chairs on top of one corner. Ambrose tried to suplex Rollins, who avoided it and then countered by dropping Ambrose onto the tack, a stack of chairs. Rambles went, Rollins went to ringside and slid a table under the ring. I mean, uh, slid, slid a table in the ring, which was eventually draped over the ring apron against the cage. Ambrose came back and placed Rollins on the table and then Abel dropped him and d drove Rollins through the table at 6 minutes 20 seconds in. Ambrose graded Rollins' face into the cage. Kane showed up out of nowhere and sprayed a fire extinguisher into Ambrose's face. Rollins put Ambrose through a the table, then dra dragged him back into the ring at 8 minutes 10 seconds in. 
Rollins hits the curve stop, Punisher and Covered Ambrose, who kicks out at two. Fans didn't buy into that being the near being a near fall, but they were into the match. And eight minutes, fifty seconds in, Rollins went to ringside and grabbed a grabbed his money in the brief, bank briefcase and set it inside the ring. Rollins picked up a chair and slammed it over the back of Ambrose repeatedly. Then took three swings at Ambrose's chest and arm. Rollins put Ambrose's face over the money in the bank briefcase and backed up for another curb stomp. But Ambrose stood up and fought him off. Rollins avoided dirty deeds and caught Ambrose with a kick. Ambrose came back with a clothesline and followed up Rollins uh, like a, an accordion. Folded up Rollins like an accordion and covered him for a two count. They got a good portion of the crowd uh, bought into. Ambrose went to ringside and pulled out a chair of sin a pair of center blocks from underneath the ring and then set them down next to Rollins. Ambrose put Rollins' face over the box and set up for his own curb stop. Lights went out. A voice could be heard repeating the same line over and over again. Even the subtitle listed it, it as inaudible. When the lights turned on again, Bray Wyatt's lantern was in the middle of the ring. There was also a hole in, in the ring and smoke coming out of it. An image appeared. In the smoke, then Bray Wyatt charged at Ambrose and closed line and then the lights went out again. Lights turned on again and Wyatt did, did the crab walk. Then slammed Ambrose to the mat with a urinagic. The fans booed. Rollins covered Ambrose and pinned him while Wyatt knelt by them and stared down at him. After Rollins left the ring, Wyatt hit Seth Strabagall on Ambrose. Seth Rollins defeated Ambrose in the Hell of Sound match in 14 minutes. Well, I came close to the bold prediction, but there, there was no sign of Luke Harper or Eric Owen on the pay-per-view. I definitely could have done without the cheesy R2-D2-like effect and the smoke machine in the middle of the ring. As I did uh, see some type of replay on it, the lack of a clean finish in the Hell of Cell won't be popular. But look forward to a Wyatt vs. Ambrose feud, though I am a bit concerned because neither man can really afford to lose that feud. And it was much better ring work in the Cena versus Orton match, but the balling that Rollins and Ambrose used for the live crowd overall was a, as good as about you can hope for after weeks of poor build-up. The work for the wrestlers made this an entertaining show, even though it wasn't particularly newsworthy. And that concludes my Hell of Cell results and NXT spoilers for uh, the month of November, or October, and November. Thanks again. Peace out. God bless you. Want to be? Want to be? Yeah. By the way, if you don't know, you better call me broke.